The Alpine Butterfly. This knot is tied in the middle of a piece of rope without needing access to either of the ends. You make two round turns in a rope so that there are three strands on the top and two on the bottom. Then take the middle strand, bring it through outside and then through the middle of the crossing turns. And there is your alpine butterfly. The bowling is a general purpose loop. Form a crossing turn some way from the end of the working end. Take the end through the crossing turn like this, behind the standing part and then back through the crossing turn and pull tight. And there is the bowling. For further security you can make this working end here longer and then tie an overhand knot around the loop here just for a bit of extra security. If you want to tie a bowline in slippery line or rope, then we can use a bowline with two turns. So we form two crossing turns instead of one crossing turn at the beginning. And the working end comes through like that in the normal way. there's a bowling with two turns. The figure of eight loop. This knot is essentially a figure of eight knot tied in a bight of rope and it doesn't need access to the ends of the rope. It's not as easy to untie as the bowling but it's easy to remember how to tie it. Simply use a bight of rope to form a figure of eight loop. So I've just tied a figure of eight knot using a bite and there's the loop. If the figure of eight loop has to be tied through a ring or round a pole then we can't just tie a figure of eight knot in a bite so instead we use the threaded figure of eight. You tie a loose figure of eight knot in a rope leaving a fair amount of working end. So here we are, there's the crossing turn, one more twist and there's the loose figure of eight knot. Now what you do is you put the working end around the pole or through the, the ring and then you just thread the working end following the path of the rope through the knot. You can see there's the figure of eight knot in the bite, but now it's around a loop, a uh, ring. The double overhand loop. As its name implies, this is an overhand knot with a difference. You take a bite, make an overhand knot, but you take the bite through the crossing turn twice. And there it is. This can actually be quite difficult to untie. The double overhand sliding loop. This knot is useful when the knot needs to increase or decrease in size, for example when attaching a thin cord to a pair of spectacles. Make a crossing turn like this and take the working end around the loop once, twice, and then tuck the working end down between the two, under the two loops there. And there it is, and you can see we can increase and decrease in size and tighten it by pulling the other, the working end. And in fact, this is a, if you ever need to undo this, it's a slip knot. It just pulls apart. Holding on the bite. This knot has a double loop, and both loops must be subject to strain. Simply tie a very loose overhand knot with a bite. So there's the crossing turn end of the bite through the crossing turn. And now what you do 
you should put your hand through the end of the bite and grab the other part, the part of the bite that just before it enters the crossing turn. So it's that. And with the other hand, you pull the bite over the first hand. And that's it. There's the bowling on the bite. And there are the two loops. The blood dropper knot. This knot is usually tied in fishing line to form a loop near the end of the line, but not actually at the end. You tie a large, loose overhand knot, and you tuck the working end through the crossing turn about five times. So there's, tuck it through once, twice, three times, four, five. So you see the single strand at the bottom and then the series of twists at the top there. Then about halfway along the twists you open it out a little and you pass the single strand through it. And then you pull the knot tight. And there's the blood dropper knot.